Boy, oh boy, I got a lot going on this morning. It is 12-3. This will be the third time recording today. Uh, first time I was talking about spiritual light passing through. Um, love that channel. Now, I went to my Facebook, and I was tagged in a post by my homie Javon, True Seeker. And I'm going to read this post. Okay? Hey, they brush off and mock at your warnings that really come from the Spirit, the Most High. One, it's out of fear. For some, the best way to relieve themselves is simply by sticking their head in the sand. They don't want to see what you're saying, and they don't want to hear what you're saying. Two, they respond by laughing it off, taking it as you being a religious fool, talking that crazy religious nonsense. Three, they simply ignore it. They don't care. But they will when that time comes. Many unbelievers were tough all through life until they knew it was time for them to go. Then they cried asking, what have I done? What have I done? Oh, now you're worried. Now you're worried. See, now I, if, if I was to get like a, um, if I was to get bad news, like, you know, it's your time to go. Bruh, I will go at peace because I literally have repented of all of my sins, unknowing and knowing, okay? And I've done my best to try to live a righteous life before the eyes of my maker, okay? Now, you can't hide from him. You, you cannot hide from the all power of love and life, okay? You can't hide from the giver of the breath of life, okay? You may be able to hide from your brothers and sisters. You may be able to put on the front any pretense, you know, to the world. But the Father sees all, okay? Now, I'm going to get back to his post. Four, they respond with anger and frustration, which is like my family, okay? This is my dad in particular. Uh, this is also um, a couple of my neighbors, okay? Ironically, most people is ignoring it. Most people is ignoring it. Like most of the Gentiles is out of fear. Like, so, you know, my friend that I told you about, um, that I met at Alorica and, and how she went MIA and ghost. I talked about it on another video. Okay. And this one out of fear, they, you know, in order to relieve themselves, they stick their head in the sand. Like, they don't want to see what you're saying. They don't want to hear about it. They don't want to hear what I'm saying. She didn't want to hear what I had to say, okay? Um, two, they're laughing it off like my brother and his wife. Laughing it off. Taking it like I'm a religious fool talking all kinds of crazy religious nonsense. All right? Three, they simply ignore it. They don't care. This is my mom. She falls in this category. She just ignores it. She doesn't come to my channel when I try to, you know, show her when I first started my channel. You know, I, I tried to share it with her and she never, she never seemed interested in it. Never wanted to really look at it. Okay. And four, they respond with anger. This is my dad. Okay, so I have all these people in my life, all four situations um, I've seen in my life. Okay, so we're on number four. They respond with anger and frustration. Stop judging us. Let us do what we want. God knows my heart. Yeah, you're right. He does. And nobody's saying that you can't do what you want. You have free will. But we are saying that the Most High has laws. And our choices on earth has consequences. Both spiritually and physically. Whether you like it or not. Those consequences can be dealt to you in this life or after death, 
Okay? There's an eternal law in effect. You can't change his eternal law. Okay? So I come in love. Though I come in love and I tell my neighbor, you know, the father never gave us dead bodies to eat. He never gave us animals to eat. She like, well, I don't, I'm going to eat what I want. God knows my heart. I'm like, yeah, he does know your heart. And, you know, what we do have consequences, you know, like she talk, she talks to me a lot about her health issues, bruh. And so that's why we even get on the subject because I don't just, you know, tell people this just to like, you know, put them down. I'm trying to help her. Because when she talks to me about all of her issues that she has, diabetes and, you know, all kind of, I told her how, you know, my, my pre-diabetes was, was reversed. I'm no longer diabetic at all. I'm not pre-diabetic, and I have been pre-diabetic for years, okay? So, she she throws that out a lot. God knows my heart. <laughs> like, bruh, yeah, you're right. He does know your heart. And like my brother said, Nobody's saying that you can't do what you want. You got free will. You have free agency. But we are saying that the Most High has laws and our choices on earth has consequences, both spiritually and physically, whether you like it or not. Those consequences can be dealt to you in this life or after death, but know that you won't escape it. Take Emmett Till's accuser, for example. She may have avoided prison and lived out her whole life, but she lived with that heavy evil secret in her heart. You really think she's not going to face her crimes when she leaves her body behind? She's not escaping that. Don't choose to understand that situation when it's somebody else. Understand the same thing goes for yourself and all of us. We all got to die one day and account for the deeds done in our lives. But people are puffed up and arrogant against the Most High because they have breath in their body right now, for now. Everyone will be held accountable for their actions before the creator. See, the problem in this world, especially America, is that thanks to all the false doctrines and the false prophets of this world, the people don't really believe that there is a supreme being that overwatches both the whole world and the spiritual realm. Nor do they understand him because he doesn't respond according to human standards. We're talking a being that's infinitely beyond human comprehension. And we expect him to act like our sinful selves. People expect the most high to be like Superman. When you trip and fall, he's supposed to swoop in and save you from scraping your knee. And if he doesn't, you're mad at him. He must not exist. They talk like they believe, but their heart is far from him. Your words and actions spring from what's in your heart. Your mouth can say anything it wants, but a tree is known by its fruit. The sad thing is that you're telling them the truth out of genuine love. You care about them. You care about their spirit, their soul. But how can you help someone that doesn't care about themselves spiritually? How can you help someone who believes what they do is right now, what they do right now matter? Hold on. How can you help someone who believes what they do is right now, matter what? And if it's wrong, the Most High will be okay, constantly, as if His mercies can be taken advantage of, as if grace won't come to an end soon. Scripture says, I see, and people are mistaken what grace is. 
So yeah, you get grace when you wake up in the morning with the breath of life. It's more time for you to repent. It's more time for you to fall on your face and wholeheartedly repent to your maker. But most people take that grace for granted. They take it for granted. And they use that breath of life to continue in their wickedness until their number is punched. And then they want to be mad. Scriptures say spiritual things are foolishness to the carnal minded. Nevertheless, we know that a deadline is closing in on this world. Something is coming. And it's going to be sad to see the same people you tried to warn in the world turn pale as a ghost from heavy fear. Because the very thing you tried to help save them from is now here. And their destruction slash death is imminent and obvious. And there is nothing nobody can do about it now. I wonder what the victims of the great flood thought when that destruction came after Noah warned them for so long. And he dropped a scripture, Ezekiel 33, 6. But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood would I require at the watchman's hand. Now I don't call myself no watchman. But clearly, I have been warning. Clearly, I have been sounding the alarm. Shalom.